want to build fourth and fifth floor relationships with your customers and your clients and your employees. You can't just be nice to people. Nice is not enough. Nicety isn't enough. You can't just use people's name, speak about other people's interests, be kind, use a smile. Those might get you a good introduction, a good networking, but to build lifelong customers, to build lifelong friends, to build employees that will stay in your company and work their tail off for you because they believe in you and their mission, you have to have four and fit four relationships. successful organizations in the 21st century, it can't just be about you. It can't just be about profits. I'm not saying profits aren't important. Profits are very important. But if you study the history of how organizations, companies, actually started, they started to serve others, to find a void in the community, to give back. And relationships and profits should be co Relationships and profits should be equals. You know, companies across the world always talk about ROI, return on investment. If I'm going to invest in something, what's my return? I like to introduce a new concept called ROR, return on relationships. Now, if you invest in relationships, if you invest in your employees, if you invest in your customers, and to do that, you've got to give. to build fourth and fifth floors, you have to advance people. You have to think about how you can connect people. His forthcoming and highly anticipated book, It's Not Just Who You Know, is published by Random House. Readers discover how to shift personal and professional relationships from transactional to transformational, inspiring purpose, value, and profitability. His revolutionary concepts have been applauded by leading business strategists. It's not about getting. You have to look at yourself and say, how can I help others? You gotta have that DNA in your heart. And if you have that DNA in your heart, you will change your career, you advance your career, you will change your organization, your organization will grow and have even more profits and you'll change the world. Tommy has spoken to corporations, educational institutions, associations, organization, it has to be a spirit in your heart. And that spirit will change the world. He is sincere, authentic, and funny. He inspires audiences to think that he's eager to put his ideas into action. And it was a hard year for me because all my friends were going to all these amazing schools, Michigan, Notre Dame, Stanford, Harvard, and they graduated magna cum laude and summa cum laude, and I graduated high school. Thank God almighty cum laude. I mean, it was hard. It was hard. Tommy draws from his life story to inspire audiences. So I moved to this village of 6,000 Japanese. I was the only gaijin, the only American. I didn't speak a lick of, I can't even speak English correctly, let alone <laughs> Japanese. And I get to this community, I didn't know anybody. And it was the first time in a long time that I was scared. And my next door neighbor, Mrs. Tanaka, that owned the local bread store, she knocked on my door. And she welcomed me. 
and she explained that she has two kids in high school, and she's really interested in learning conversational English. And we, we became friends. She'd come over to my house, and we'd have a little tea party, and we'd talk English, and she'd teach me some Japanese, and then she inv finally invited me to her home, and I went to her home and met her two children. We started talking about English and Japanese, and we built this beautiful friendship. This American kid and this Japanese family, 12,000 miles away. As time went on, I realized that every time I went over their house, the husband, Mr. Tanaka, never really came in the room. In fact, when I, when I came in the room, he would leave. And at first I thought he was just really shy, because you know the Japanese culture, they don't speak perfect English, they're very shy. So I, just, I thought he wanted to excuse himself. But as about months went on, I realized that there was something going on here. So I remember when I went to Mrs. Tanaka, and I finally asked her, why, every time I come over here, does your husband leave the room? And Mrs. Tanaka started crying, and she had tears in her face, and she bowed her head in shame. And she said, my, my husband hates America. My husband hates Americans. He, he vowed never to have an American in his home. I said, why? I, I, I know I'm a Yankee fan. You don't have to hold that against me. <laughs> Your country bombed our country 50 years ago in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And my husband's family was killed. And he hates America. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. That's what she said. But I went back and back and finally after volunteering at his house and helping shovel that snow when the snow came down and when they picked the rice in, in April, I was there at 4 o'clock in the morning helping pick the rice, trying to earn his respect, earn his trust, earn his friendship. And it's amazing what sake can do. <laughs> we drank a lot of sake. Wow. And we started laughing. And we started becoming friends. And we became great friends. Two years later, I left Japan to go to Australia to get my business degree. And I remember going to the train station to say goodbye. And there was all my friends and family that I met in Japan for the last two years. This is 15 years ago. And there was Mr. Tanaka budging his way through the line with his arms wide open, saying, I love you. You are my American son. One person a dyslexic kid from upstate New York that never left New York got to travel with an organization called Up With People that changed his heart and changed his life. And because of that, he changed Mr. Tonic. Every single person in this room has a Mr. Tonic in your company, in your community, and in your life. Every single person has the opportunity to build relationships with people that you don't think of.